I'm Caleb Harris from You Can Make This Too. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this assembly table workbench with T-Track that has all the tools I use most often whenever I'm building or finishing a project. Stay with me and I'll show you how you can make this too. The first step was wrangling all my plywood into my shop and breaking it down. I normally have the center breakdown sheets for me, but that's when I'm working with three quarter inch, which is a lot harder to wrangle by myself than half inch. And this project is almost entirely made from half inch plywood. Also, I've recently had some bad luck with the saw operators at the home center and I just received the True Track saw guide and wanted to give it a try on a project. They're not a sponsor, but I do want to say I'm really liking their guide so far. It's almost entirely aluminum, everything is made in America, and the adapter plates are actually made in my home state of Tennessee. Plus, they're a small family owned business, and all of those things are things I think are awesome. Uh, I have a link below if you want to learn more about them and their product. The plywood cuts off the guide are pretty clean, but I still prefer the finish and accuracy of cuts I can get at my table saw. So I use the track saw to break everything down close to dimension and get it easier to handle and then cut it to final size with the table saw. I'm using half inch plywood to keep cost and weight down, but half inch plywood is a lot less rigid than three quarter inch, so I have to use some different techniques in this build to make sure I don't end up with a sagging bench. First thing I do is frame out two bottoms with reinforcing stretchers to make sure it can carry the weight. I'll be publishing plans for this build, and if you pre-order at the link below before I get them published, you'll be able to get them at a 25% discount. But once I publish them, they're going to be full price. My plans are made from 3D models and include material list, cut diagram, step-by-step -step instructions, and you can always reach out to me if you have any questions about them. The main box will be held together with screws and pocket holes, so I drilled the pocket holes before I start assembling. First is attaching the bases to the middle support. I screw them together from both sides, taking care to not accidentally run the screws into each other. Next come the sides. They're attached to the bottom pieces with screws from the inside so they won't be visible and pocket holes from the middle support also so they won't be visible. I take extra time to make sure I'm assembling everything square to each other to minimize any headaches later. With the main box assembled, I start building drawers. The concept behind the storage in this bench is to have a rough side and a finished side. The rough side will have storage for my most commonly used cordless tools and accessories, joinery kits, clamps, glues, screws, stuff like that that I'll use a lot when I'm actually putting stuff together. And then the finished side will have, well, finishes, brushes, foam brushes, wiping cloth, sandpaper, sanders, triangles, paint sprayers, etc. I'm sure you get the idea. Then on each end, I'm going to store the tools I reach for most often and my smaller clamps. The rough side has a vertical drawer on each end, so I install those first before starting on the regular drawers that'll go in the middle. To mount the drawers, I'm using full extension ball bearing slides. If you get these at the home center, they're pretty expensive, but they're rather affordable if you buy bulk packs on Amazon. I'll have a link below for the ones I purchased. I like to install slides by taking them apart and screwing them to the carcass, then putting them back together and sliding the drawer into place and adding two screws to the front of the drawer. Then I can take the drawer out and put in the rest of the screws. To make sure the dividers that the middle drawers will mount to are square, I cut spacer blocks and use them to keep consistent spacing from the box sides to the dividers as I screw the dividers into place. I also go ahead and add top cleats at this point. They serve three purposes. They help keep the frame square, they provide strength to the top, and they also provide a way of securing the top to the base. Then I use the same method to install the middle drawers as the vertical drawers, but for the first drawer, my jig won't fit, so I just use some offcuts to make sure that the slides in the drawer are equally spaced from the bottom. Now, despite my best efforts, sometimes things still are just enough out of alignment that a drawer slide won't work well, like happened with the first drawer. When that happens, I just use some door shims to shim out the slide until it starts operating smooth, and then everything's good. Once all the drawers were in, the rough side was complete. The finish side is pretty much the same, except that it's one bank of wide drawers and then a cubby with some plywood slides for small totes that I like to store things in that I want to stay completely dust free. In my small garage shop, there were two musts for this table, leveling feet and casters, both of which Rockler was kind enough to provide for me. I've purchased these casters before and they work great. This is my first time with the leveling feet, but so far I'm really liking them. Now onto the top. I made the top out of three quarter inch plywood. 
for the rigidity and because I'll be setting T-Track into it. I'll talk more about the T-Track later. A lot of folks opt to cut dados for T-Tracks with a router, but my tabletop is pretty manageable at 3 feet by 4 feet, so I decided to do it at the table saw. It's less setup time and the dust collection is a lot better. The trick to a perfect fit was doing a lot of test cuts to make sure I had the thickness of the dado stack and the depth of cut dialed in. Then I attached the top to the base by screwing through the cleats I installed earlier. I wanted to add some edge banding to clean up the appearance of the table, so I used some scrap walnut I had left over from a previous project. I'm going to be looking at this nearly every day, so I figured why not treat myself. I ripped the walnut down to size and installed it using glue and brad nails. I mitered the corners to hide the end grain. You might be wondering why I didn't install the edge banding before cutting the dados for the T-Track. Well, I didn't want to wait for the glue to dry or worry about hitting a brad nail with my dado blade. If I fumbled with the tabletop on, I didn't want to worry about accidentally breaking off the edge banding. And lastly, I thought it'd be easier to get the top aligned in place without the edge banding on because it conceals the top of the base. The only downsiding to adding the edge banding later is that I had to extend the dados into the edge banding. I thought the simplest and fastest way would be to just do it by hand. So I busted out my pull saw and chisels and went to town. It really only took me about 10 minutes. Now I take a pause from the top to work on the drawer fronts. I cut them all from a single piece of plywood to have a sort of continuous grain. I started on one side and worked my way across, planning for an eighth inch gap between the drawers. I attached the drawer fronts using CA glue and activator to hold them in place, and then came back and drove three quarter inch screws from the inside to permanently attach them. And I went ahead and used some spring clamps as a little bit of insurance while I screwed them. Next, everything received a 220 grit sanding before I installed the T-Track. I installed the intersections for the T-Track first so I could cut the runs to fit. The T-Track is made from aluminum which is soft enough to cut with wood tools. So I cut these slowly at my miter station and then screwed everything into place. I put the T-Track in before I finished so I wouldn't have to worry about the finish building up in the dados and interfering with the fit. Once it was all in, I masked off the T-Track with some blue tape and applied polyurethane and then several coats of wax because I want to make sure nothing will stick to this top. Let me take a moment to tell you about this video sponsor, Richard from 42Fab. Huge shout out to you Richard for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help support this content, there's a few ways you can do that. You can become a patron and I'm working on revamping the reward levels for that. So let me know in the comments about what would interest you. There will be limited swag, discounted or free access to plans and stuff like that. You can also purchase plans for me and remember that if you do that when a video is published, they'll probably be on pre-order at a discount or use any of my affiliate links whenever you shop on Amazon. Those provide a small percentage to the channel at no extra expense to you. If those aren't your thing, then you can help growth simply by engaging. Hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment, or share this on your favorite social media platforms. All of those things actually help a lot, and there will be links below for all of it. But however you choose to support or not, you have my thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch me share what's happening in my shop. Now for finishing touches. I used a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit to drill a thumb hole in the drawer fronts to act as a pull. A backer board clamped in place helped prevent any tear out on the backside. I'm always reaching for small clamps to hold things while I assemble or for glue ups, so I decided to put them at the side of the bench right at hand. I used Rockler clamp racks for the F style and quick clamps, and to hold my spring clamps, I glued and screwed some small plywood off cuts to the side to clip them onto. On the opposite side, I installed some sash pulls to act as hangers for my drill, driver, and brad gun, which I use all the time. I opted to go for T-Tracks on this bench because of all the clamping options that are available now with the clamps that Rockler has put out, which is what I was hoping to get from the Polk bench, but having all those holes in the top just ended up being more trouble than it was worth to me, and I learned I'm not the kind of person that's always going to put paper on it whenever I need the holes covered, so that just didn't work out. And because the storage in it wasn't laid out very well, I often ended up covering the entire top with stuff whenever I was working on a project because there's just no good way to keep at hand what I use all the time. So very often I ended up working in an absolute cluttered mess even though I had a massive workbench. And I'm hoping that this workbench is gonna solve that. 
And to supplement this bench, later I'll be building a hand tool workbench to do hand tool work at, as well as a tool wall to store all my planes, chisels, hand saws, and such. As well as an outfeed table with a router lift built into it to give me a little bit more working space. So if those are projects you'd be interested in, make sure you hit subscribe so you check those later. Once again, big thanks to Rockler for providing the hardware for this build, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.